let's go. Yo, yo, I done met a lot of women in my lifetime. But see, it's not a lot of women that got the right mind. I done had pretty chicks with all the right features. And hood rat chicks that only rock sneakers. Cell phones and beepers and no. Loon is an iconic bad boy rapper who attempted to reform and find his faith only to be sucked back into the very life he was trying to escape. He recorded several albums and was featured alongside popular acts like Usher on the singles that made him famous, like I Need a Girl Part 1. And I Need a Girl Part 2 by P. Diddy. He was launched through the Bad Boy Records company alongside several new talents in 2001 and seemed to be one of the next up and coming artists. Several years and several albums later, however, he suddenly converted to Islam and left the music scene almost overnight. His lifestyle change included a radical move from America to Egypt and it appeared that would be the last anyone would hear from him. This was not the case though as he was arrested a few years later on a trip to Brussels and was sentenced to 14 years in prison for conspiracy to sell heroin. With such a promising start followed by such a radical change, how did Loon go from an up and coming artist to religiously reformed to prison inmate? What happened to Loon? Let's dig in and find out. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Topic. You do the shrimp trip to the tropics. That's not my steez, not like me. It's not the Loon was born Chauncey Lamont Hawkins around the mid 70s in Harlem, New York. He was predominantly brought up in the tough streets of Harlem by his grandmother before she sent him to the West Coast to live with his godfather in a fresh Prince of Bel Air esque move. His godfather was a well known movie producer, George Jackson, who was famous for producing movies like Crush Groove and New Jack City. He lived amongst the children of the Hollywood elite in Beverly. Beverly Hills and it was here that he earned the nickname turned stage name Loon owing to his zany behavior. He remained with his godfather for several years before returning to Harlem at the tender age of 17. After experiencing such a drastically different lifestyle from the crime filled streets of his youth to the rich and talented life of Beverly Hills, Loon chose to pursue a music career rather than giving his life to the streets. He focused on honing his rap skills and generating hype around himself. The word spread and by the late 90s he had garnered enough professional interest to get signed to two different labels. Unfortunately despite this, the signings led nowhere and no album was produced. Refusing to be deterred, he worked hard to establish himself and create his own brand. Loon got his big break around 1999 when he was signed to Mace's rap collective Harlem World named after Mace's 1998 chart topping album. The crew released their debut album The Movement that same year. The album achieved modest sales but it was nowhere near the blockbuster that it was expected to be. It was certified gold by the RIAA and it peaked at number 11 on the Billboard 200. Though this is quite an impressive feat for a debut album, everybody in the crew expected it to do better and blamed the results on Mesa's sudden career shift. In an ironic foreshadowing of Loon's own decisions later in life, May suddenly dropped out of rap altogether in order to join a ministry. This occurred shortly after the album had been dropped and it left the artist on the label floundering. Luckily, Mace's friend Sean Combs aka P Diddy stepped in and saved the day. He signed Loon to his own solo contract with Bad Boy Records in 2001 and gave him a kickstart to his career by featuring him with several other artists. It was through this signing that Chauncey officially selected Loon as his stage moniker. He featured on several songs before releasing his debut album around 2003. His first feature was Promise with Jagged Edge. But since the night how can they say that I'm not true? The song came out around the year 2000 but failed to chart. He featured on two more songs around 2001 called The Saga Continues with Diddy, G Depp, and Black Rob. And Blast Off with G Depp and Mark Curry, both of which still feature in his most popular songs on Spotify to this day. Now, the one single that made Loon famous was his feature on I Need a Girl Part 1. 
which was released around February of 2002. Luna appeared alongside Usher and the song was an instant hit, peaking in the top 10 across the board. It peaked at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100. I Need a Girl Part 2 was part of the same album and was released in May of the same year. The Loon featured alongside Genuine and Mario Winans in the follow-up which obviously starred P. Diddy. The single was also a massive success and once again hit all three charts in the top 10. It picked at number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100. Other successful features for him included I Do with Diddy and 3LW, Young and Sexy with Lyric, and Hit the Freeway with Tony Braxton. All three singles made their way to the charts but did not chart very highly and the highest chart single was Hit the Freeway which picked at number 32 on the US Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart. After two years of hard work and proving himself through his successful features, Loon finally released his self-titled album called Loon. The album came out around 2003 and was an instant success, peaking at number 6 on the Billboard 200 and spawning two successful singles. The singles were Down From Me featuring Mario Winans. And How You Want That featuring Kelis. Both singles charted and they remain his highest charting singles as a lead artist to date. Down For Me peaked at number 24 on the Billboard Hot 100 and How You Want That did not perform as well, peaking at number 88 on the Billboard Hot 100. Whilst under the umbrella of Bad Boy Records, Lewin dabbled in acting. He featured in two movies directed by Damon Dash, 2003's Death of a Dynasty and 2005's State Property 2. This was not his only work in the film industry, as Loon recorded another single for the soundtrack to Bad Boys 2 in 2003. The single was called Show Me Your Soul, featuring Diddy, Lenny Kravitz, and Pharrell. This was the last single he would record for Bad Boy Records, as he left shortly afterwards in 2004 because he felt like he wasn't getting the attention he deserved as an artist. In one of his interviews, he said the following, being that Puff has so much going on, I didn't want to be the nagging artist. I was happy for all his success, but I was at a crossroads as an artist. I wanted to put forth the same effort for myself that I was putting forth for Bad Boy. So he allowed me the opportunity to go out and be a budding entrepreneur and be my own man. In interviews decades later, he reflected that it was probably better that he left Bad Boy Records because he kept getting into trouble with the law while he was still signed to the label. In one interview, he said the following, I caught more cases while I was on Bad Boy than I did when I was on the street. I kid you not. Y'all remember the joint in the House of Blues? Caught attempted murder. I don't even want to go into the list like I'm glorifying it. The incident he was referring to took place in the House of Blues and involved him and two other men allegedly attacking and stabbing a bouncer for refusing them entry. He was initially charged with attempted murder but only spent one night in jail before being released on bail. A week later, he was formally charged with assault with a deadly weapon. The charges were later dropped because the attacker could not be identified. Even though Loon was doing collaborations with some of the biggest artists at the time, Loon said goodbye to Bad Boy Records and left to start his own label, Boss Up Entertainment. The label signed King T and released Boss Up Mixtape Volume 1 in November 2005 before seeming to disappear. But the following year, Loon had released music under a different label. Around 2006, he released his sophomore album No Friends through Cleopatra Records. And the album made no noise and failed to chart anywhere. Barely two months later, he released a third album called Wizard of Harlem, this time under the label Sickness. Once again, the album made no noise, although this might be due to him reworking his brand. On his first album with Diddy, Loon presented himself as a pretty boy rapper with smooth lyrics. On his second and third albums, he redefined himself and presented more of a gangster persona, something that his audience was not accustomed to. Whatever the reason, neither album performed very well and he stopped releasing solo albums after that. He took one last musical shot on a collaboration album with G-Dep titled Bad Boy. The album was released around 2007 under the label Sickness but once again it went unnoticed and no singles were released from it. This would be Loon's last album. Around the time Mace joined G-Unit around 2005, Loon made his issues with Mace public and implied that Mace's career needed to be saved by G-Unit. I was basically like, that's my dude, but if dude feels G-Unit can save him from ridicule, which can definitely be a reality in the future, good luck.
Now when Loon refers to Mace being ridiculed, he's talking about the time that Mace got ran out of Harlem by a gangster called Baby Main. On the Bad Boys 2 soundtrack, Loon made a song with Snoop Dogg called Gangsta Shit where he calls Mace a coward for leaving Harlem. If you want more information on the Mace vs Loon beef, watch my What Happened to Mace video as it contains more information. After Loon said what he had to say about Mace, Mace quickly fired back on Return of Murder, a track off a G-Unit mixtape titled The Return of Mixtape Millionaire, The Massacre World Tour Edition by 50 Cent and DJ Wukid. After hearing The Return of Murder, Loon fired back at Mace on tracks, you're not a rider. But you don't wanna tell your homeboy that you ain't fucking with that chrome toy. You do not. And you heard. Now around the time that Mace got ran out of Harlem, Jim Jones had some negative things to say about Loon on a Sub-Zero DVD. Loon then fired back on a track called Jimmy, one that states that Jim Jones is just a studio gangster. Jim Jones is a p He ain't gonna hurt nothing. He ain't gonna let nothing die. He's a coward. Dip said is they whole shit is just over had enough of that shit. Now the beef between Dipset and Loon reached a new height when 40 Cow and Loon met in a barbershop. 40 Cow and Loon had a fight, one in which Loon used a shovel to attack 40 Cow. When Loon talks about the event of that day, he claims he was the victor of that fight. But 40 Cow has a different story to tell. We were in a barbershop and I hadn't seen him in a dumb long time and he tried to hit me with some shovel shit. It clipped me in my shoulder. I got up, he swung again, and I blocked his shit and threw him in a chair. I gave him a couple hits, I hit him in the face, in the body, we tussling and they broke it up. I went outside to finish the altercation and he grabbed the shovel again, got scared and just started running. He jumped in some Ford Focus and I just finished getting my lining. The pair spoke about the altercation during radio interviews, with both sides claiming that they won the fight. And though, stop making all these statements talking about a nigga hit you with a shovel and did all this shit to you, B. I ain't do nothing to you, B. Alright? You hear me? Look at me, dog. I ain't do nothing to you. Diss tracks were released, however, in the end, the beef went nowhere. After the failure of his albums outside of Bad Boy, Loon took a break from recording music and focused on himself. After a trip to Abu Dhabi, he fell in love with the Islam faith and converted fully by December of 2008. Along with the change in faith, he formally changed his name from Chauncey Lamont Hawkins to Amir Junaid Muhadith, his Islamic name. The name was inspired by his pilgrimage to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, the holiest location in Islam, to complete Umrah and pay true devotion to his faith. He officially ended his music career and relocated to Egypt where he would live until 2011. In an interview with Al Jazeera Entertainment, he said, I visited Abu Dhabi, Emirates capital, and there I found real happiness and tranquility. I was affected with the Muslims' culture and I admired their refined morals, their kind treatment with people, and especially their regular going to pray at the mosque five times every day. I announced my conversion to Islam after a profound thinking, and I prayed for the first time after my return to my home in Harlem, New York. My relief increased a lot when my wife and son accepted Islam. Now Loon's peace was short-lived as he was arrested around 2011 whilst traveling from Egypt to Brussels. He was then extradited to his home country, the US, to face sentencing. He decided not to go to trial as he already had two felony charges against him from his youth. And with this new charge, they would total 25 years or a mandatory life sentence due to the trial tax. Instead, he pleaded guilty to conspiring to traffic heroin and earned himself 14 years of imprisonment with four years of supervised release. His official sentence was one count of conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute one kilogram or more of heroin. Loon claimed innocence and described the situation as guilty by association. In an interview with BET, he said the following, Some individuals crossed my path who were interested at one point in the music business. At some point, these individuals called me in regards to something that was totally away from the lifestyle and the life I was living. But the fact that I responded to these individuals placed me underneath the umbrella of conspiracy. That I was locked up because the Qadr Allah, ma shafa'ala. Sometimes, you know, a blessing comes in the form of a trial. And what you find amongst many of these individuals who pride themselves on, you know, glorifying their positions in the streets and all of these type of things. Yeah. When, it, when the pressure's on, 
They try to find a scapegoat with yeah. actions. Loon ended up in prison in North Carolina. He described his life in prison as one intended to transform him into a better version of himself. He said that his biggest difficulty in prison was practicing his religion. It was very difficult for him to pray when there wasn't much space, and he had to avoid facing the toilet when he prayed as this would mean that he was praying to the toilet. Around June 2020, Loon filed an instant compassionate release motion during the COVID pandemic. His reasons for filing were because of his pre-existing health conditions, including latent tuberculosis, acute bronchitis, bronchopneumonia, and some others that I cannot pronounce. Such health issues, according to CDC rules guiding the COVID-19 outbreak, could be aggravated by a positive test for the virus. The former rapper served eight years of the 14 years allotted to him and around July of 2020, the 45-year-old rapper was released from prison. According to the New York Post, U.S. District Judge Terrence Boyle changed his sentence to time served due to the fact that the COVID-19 pandemic was extraordinary and a compelling reason for his release due to his previous health issues. The judge also felt that Loon was not a threat to society and he converted the rest of his sentence to time spent under supervision. This early release came after a long-running celebrity campaign pressing ex-president Donald Trump to grant him clemency. Around 2019, Weldon Angelos wrote out a 34-page request and more than a dozen celebrities signed it. The letter laid out their request to release Loon and specified that he only ever made an introduction and was never formally involved in illegal activity. The letter was signed by big names like Snoop Dogg, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, Freeway, Ben Zeno, and more. After his release from prison, he reunited with Diddy and shared his reunion on Instagram. He captioned the photo of their reunion, Everything is not what it seems. After all that we've been through, the love cannot be denied. We've traveled the world together, made millions together, and at times we may not have always agreed, but by Allah, if I hadn't experienced the things that we went through, I wouldn't have become the man that I am today. Today, Loon is married to Nona Crowd, and they share two children. After his release from prison, he chose to focus on spending time with his family and doing good in the world. He is now the co-CEO of Paid Meals, a volunteer organization that sponsors healthy, balanced meals for the homeless. It costs about $5 to sponsor a meal, or you can go to their website or app at www.paidmeals.com. In addition to this venture, he runs a successful boot camp for men where he offers workout classes in different cities across the U.S. This is fun, man. Like, I do this, you know, just in, you know, co in combination of all the other things I do. Get invited to give lectures to the youth. And while I'm there, I like to do the boot camp because it just adds to another additional form of bonding with the youth. He's also very passionate about the youth and can be seen at various mentoring events, sharing words of motivation and inspiring young brothers and sisters in his community. There were also rumors that Loon planned to form a production company to broadcast films and television shows, including a full documentary or TV series centered on his life. However, it is yet to materialize. Loon can be found on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at the handle at RealLoon2Amur. And there you have it, folks. That's the story of Loon, the bad boy turned good lad who tasted fame and found it lacking. He once loved the rap scene, but is now dedicated to himself his faith, and his family. He had one or two run-ins with the law, but has since settled down and is constantly paying it forward. Loon gets about 70,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, and his most popular songs on the platform are Down For Me, How You Want That, The Saga Continues, Blast Off, and Relax Your Mind. That's it for me, man. It's your boy Ali. <laughs> What's that joint right here, man? This is This is joint right here that put me on the map, you know what I'm saying? Come on! Yeah. Come on! Yeah. Oh my friend, I'm gonna be I know it's difficult to be young in 2021. May Allah make it easy for you. You are faced with so many different obstacles, distractions, and the more Time continues to exceed us, the more obstacles seem to emerge. What happened to Loon in your opinion? Let me know down below. If you have a video request, be sure to let me know as well. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. New What Happened to video dropping next week. 
Till next time, peace.